Welcome back to my channel. So, I, <laughs> if you notice, everything around me is a mess. There's like boxes and stuff all over my shelves. I'm trying to do uh, getting ready to go into fall refresh of my office space. My office space is a place where I do my like nine to five job and also like a reading space and it's like where I store all of my books obviously but it's also you know a spare bedroom it's like got all these functions um and it's become a disaster because that's just how life works so um one of the things I wanted to do was clear off some old books on my shelves so I have this whole stack of like YA apocalypse post-apocalyptic books that I bought in like 2018 2019 when I was working on a post-apocalyptic story that I've since like tabled maybe someday but not today um so I wanted to go through and look at these books because I have no idea if I'm actually interested in them but as I was going through my shelves I like got a box out right and I was getting ready to take some books to, to Half Price Books today to get rid of and I thought well maybe I should take a moment first look at these books that I don't know if I want to keep or not maybe read the first chapter of some of them and see if I'm going to keep them and like want to actually read them or if I'm going to just get rid of them, move on, let somebody who will enjoy them have them, um, and have an opportunity to purchase them at a lower price from Half Price Books. So that is kind of what I'm doing at the moment. You will see me kind of go through a read each chapter. I'll give a little short, here's what I'm thinking after the first chapter, and I'll tell you if I'm binning it or if I'm taking it with me. Backwards. I'll tell you if I'm going to keep it or bin it. Let's put it that way. So I have isolated the books that I want to do this experiment on. I have seven books. So some of these are books that I bought at Half Price Books when I was doing this, and others are ones that I bought through Thrift Books. All secondhand. I tend to buy a lot of books secondhand just for price reasons and like conservation reasons. I feel bad like making more paper, if that makes sense. So I've got seven of these. I want to read the first chapter, and I'll read the synopsis also of each of them. Um, so that you can kind of get an idea of what the book is about. I, most of these books I'd never heard of, they came up on like apocalypse book searches and stuff like that. So I will show you the books that I'm going to go through. Um, I'll do a little clip for each book to let you know kind of what I'm thinking after the first chapter and I'll let you know my status of whether I'm going to keep it or get rid of it after. All right, so first up is Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. So obviously this book was acclaimed because it was a National Book Award finalist, so that's cool. I bought it at Half Price Books. I'd never heard of it. Um, I might have just picked it up off the shelf. Honestly, it's a YA mystery about um, a small town, I guess, or a town where people tend to go missing and finding this the people who go missing. Um, it, it's about a kidnapped girl and yeah, stuff like that. Um, I'm not super sure about this book. I don't know how I ended up picking it up, but um, yeah, it's definitely about a small town. It was published in, I believe, 2015. Yep, 2015. So I'm going to read the first chapter of this one, and I'll let you know what I think. All right, so I have a glare. Uh, uh, don't look at that. This room is a disaster. <laughs> Let's try to get the books in the background. So Bone Gap. Um, I read the first chapter. I have thoughts. I'm very middling on this. Um, I'm intrigued by the mystery, which is the point of a mystery novel. 
but the main character is very bland. I don't want to say bland because he's not bland. He's just the same. He's very samey, uh, if that makes sense. So the main character's name is Finn. Um, I love an off the beaten path, but typical name like that. It's become a very popular name in fiction, especially for YA, I feel like. But the main character has like main character syndrome, <laughs> which I can't fault the author for, for that, especially because this book was written in, what did I say, 2014? Uh, now I'm going to have to look again. 2015. It was, it was copyrighted in 2015. Um, so the main character, what you kind of learn in the first chapter is the main character Finn is like well known. He, they live in a very small town. I think it's in Illinois. Wow, I read it 30 seconds ago. I don't remember. Um, they live in a very small Midwestern town. Um, basically, the main character is bullied by a group of boys at school. Again, very typical for any main character energy when, um, you know, in YA. So the main character is bullied in school. Um, we kind of open to him getting beat up on the road um, on his way home from school and they toss his backpack and it's a very typical like YA movie scene and he goes home and like he's greeted by his cat and then he tends to his garden and he goes to his brother's girlfriend who went missing's apartment that they just cleaned out and then he goes to the farmer's house to buy eggs. It's just a very weird little, it was a very weird little storyline in that first chapter. And the main character was uh, suffering from all of the things. Like he's got that like nobody likes me vibe. Um, he's got the chip on his shoulder because apparently his mother, like he, he has an older brother who's, it seems like five years older than him from what I can tell. And his older brother takes care of him. And, you know, you don't really know why at first. But at the end of the chapter, you find out that his mom got married to an orthodontist and just said, bye, I'm leaving. You can't come with me. You're staying with your brother. Or, like, the brother said, I'll, I'll keep him or something. Which, like, I know there are bad parents out there. And I know there are bad moms out there. But, like, my brain was like, I feel like there's so many problems with that. <laughs> like, in child services, like, can a mom just, like, abandon a kid like that? A 15-year-old? I don't know. So, like, I'm, I'm iffy on the main character. I'm iffy. I'm just iffy on that. But I am very intrigued by the mystery. So the mystery is around, um, I think it's his brother's girlfriend. Her name's Rosa. It sounds like maybe she's, um, not American, at least. She, he talks about her having an accent a lot. And, um, she went missing. And apparently the main character, Finn, witnessed her being kidnapped, or at least that's his story, is that he saw her, like, basically, like, her hands on the back of an SUV being kidnapped and screaming and trying to get away. But no one believes him. Like, he's gone to the police and all these things, and they, apparently he saw the man that did it, and this guy doesn't exist. And the police are like, no, you're lying. Like, that's not a real thing. Um, so I'm intrigued to see what happened to the character. I'm also intrigued if you saw like the little clip. The next chapter is from the girl who got kidnapped's perspective. So I don't know if we're going back in time to before she was kidnapped or if it's present tense. And if it's present tense, we're going to find out what happened pretty quickly. So I'm interested to find out where it goes. So I think I'm going to keep this one and I actually might just keep reading it because it was a really long chapter, like 22 pages. Um, and there's only 350 pages in the book. So I might just read it and then get rid of it because I have a feeling it's not going to be something I want to keep and like reread. But I do think it's something I, I think I'd like to read it. So I might just read this one, try to bust it out this weekend maybe because it is sh super short. Um, it is well written. I just, I don't know that I love the character of Finn. So we'll see. I might pick this one up. If I do finish it, I will tack on a review right now.
Next up, we have The Way We Fall by Megan Crew. Now this is absolutely an apocalyptic book. It's got um, all kinds of things about quarantine, um, government quarantine, harbors being on an island. Um, this was absolutely one that I purchased as um, an inspiration read for my YA post-apocalyptic story that I was working on in 2018. Um, it's about a, a government that ends up in quarantine from a disease. So um, I don't know when this one was published. It's got a really, really cool look and feel. It's by it's published by Hyperion, so like obviously, you know, super renowned publisher. And it was published in 2012. So that's interesting. Uh, I again bought it in 2018. I think from Thrift Books, maybe. Not sure. Doesn't doesn't have any identifiers on it as to where I bought it from, but I will try a chapter and we will see. is right there and yep there we go so the way we fall by megan crew so this is told in epistolary format or i i think that's what you call it it's letters written to someone but in the form of a journal so like journal epistolary format whatever um it's told from a canadian island i believe from what i have gathered i read i think the first four or five entries because they were all like maybe one or two pages long um, I always struggle a little bit with YA epistolary, um, mainly because, you know, teenagers, like, their writing, the writing is aimed at teenagers and is supposed to be penned by a teenager, so the writing is not impressive. It tends to be, like, shorter sentences, a little bit less interesting to read. There's nothing wrong with that. This is not a book that's aimed at my demographic. So, like, I'm not, I don't have to like it. I'm not necessarily expecting to always like it. But again, they haven't really introduced the, like, actual disease yet. But I'm starting, you're starting to see characters having illness. I, I think I got to page, like, 13. Um, so you do kind of see a little bit of the characters getting, uh, or of not the characters, but, like, of some side characters getting an illness. Um, but there's also some interesting stuff going on. So the main character had moved away to Toronto, so like to the big city, quote unquote, as, as the other characters are calling it, the big city. Um, and she left behind the person she's writing the letters to, whose name's Leo, and he recently left the island for what sounds like a performing arts school, maybe. Um, sounds like he's a dancer, from what I've gathered. And... So he has left the island and she's writing him these letters because she's really upset that they got in a fight and they didn't say goodbye when he left. So she's writing him these letters as a way to like get out of her own head about it, as a way to journal. She wants to become more social but like she struggles with people. She kind of also suffers um, from a little bit of main character syndrome, a little bit of a Mary Sue type thing. I mean she's not, she's not like a cardboard cut out character. I don't want to make it seem like that. Um, but she has all the things. Like, I'm different from everybody else, and I don't get along with people, and I'm, you know, I like animals better than, like, it's just a very typical YA protagonist way of being. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you've read a lot of YA, it gets a little repetitive, and you kind of start to notice that most characters are similar. Am I interested in this? Yes. Unsurprisingly, that's probably, I feel like that's how this is all gonna go, is that I'm just gonna be interested in all of them and keep them, and then they'll probably sit on my shelves and not get read, but we'll see uh, how this goes at the end of this. But that is two books down. Um, I've got, what, five more to go? Um, I'll try to get through them all this weekend, and then uh, I'll let you know after this, if I do finish this book in the near future, I will let you know what I think of it. And next up... We have Burning by Danielle Rollins. This is a book about juvie. 
super interesting. It's also a book about fire, um, dangerous girls, strange disappearances, um, very interesting, like, plot line in terms of, like, getting out of a correctional facility, or I guess juvie, as you might um, call it. So I'm interested in this one for a lot of reasons. It sounds really interesting and kind of dark. The, again, the cover is just, like, absolutely stunning to me. I love this font style. I like the every spark of evil starts within. That sounds really interesting. I don't know if this is really a mystery or if it's horror. Um, apparently, again, based, like, Stephen King's Firestarter, right? So that's interesting to me. Stephen King's Firestarter meets Monster. Super interesting. Um, published in 2016. Uh, Bloomsbury. So awesome. Definitely YA. Another one that I think would be super interesting. Um, but again, I'm not sure if I'm actually interested in it or not. So I'm going to read the first chapter. Let's continue. So I read the first chapter of Burning Being. Mm, this there we go. I read the first chapter of Burning by um, Daniel Rollins. This is actually like a super interesting premise. It's set in juvie. I think I mentioned that when I read the um, synopsis, but um, it is super interesting. I'm like iffy on the writing, and again, this is a YA. It's not aimed at me, but the writing is a little juvenile for my taste which it's supposed to be because it's a YA novel, just being totally clear. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue with this one. I am super interested in the premise, um, but I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna take the time to read it. So I think this one's gonna go in my uh, not right now pile, but I do think that this, again, this is an interesting premise and the author that wrote it actually has quite a few other interesting premises in her books. So. Um, I might see what she's, what all she's published and maybe something else of hers would be more interesting to me. But I think I am going to go ahead and send this one back to Half Price Books so that somebody who is more appropriate for the audience can read it. And next up, The Islands at the End of the World by Austin Aslan. This is another one that is post-apocalyptic YA. Um, it's set in Hawaii. Um, they're visiting Hawaii, disaster strikes, power fails, everything is like cut off from the world. So that is sort of the the center of the story. Um, it is the first and at least a duology. I don't know if more have come out since it was published. I believe it was published in 2014 or 2015. I was really interested in this one again for the like again post-apocalyptic stuff. Also the main character is epileptic so I'm interested in seeing how that is handled. So, um, this was published, uh, let's see, in 2014. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I love, again, the form factor, super cute. Love that there's a map in here. That's, that's super interesting. The text looks, like, quite big, and the book's not that long, I think, like, 350-something pages, so interested in reading the first chapter of this one. Uh, I'm loving loving to see how the culture is handled in this, as well as, like I said, that epilepsy um, representation. Interested to see how that goes. So, The Island at the End of the World by Austin Aslan. 
Um, this is exactly what I was hoping to find in this reading vlog. I'm gonna again turn away from the light. Hi, how many times am I gonna do that? Um, I love the way this is written. I'm already a fan of the main character. The family dynamic is really interesting. Um, the relationship with the Hawaiian Islands and the character and just everything about that is super interesting. I'm interested in the seizure angle of all of this, especially because this is apocalyptic um, in some way. Like there's a global disaster, technology and power fail, Hawaii is cut off from the world. Like I really want to find out what happens in this book. So this is going on my August TBR. So I'm going to read this um, probably like now and I might just continue reading it. And I will definitely be including a review clip for this guy if I finish it before this video goes up. And next up, we have City of Savages by Lee Kelly. Don't know anything about this book. Again, don't know anything about these authors either, but this takes place in New York City, which I thought was super interesting and also was supposed to be the setting of the very beginning of my story that I was writing at the time. So um, this is about a third world war breaking out and they basically have a prison camp for survivors on Manhattan. Um, so, so, and some strangers arrive and like that's, I don't know, really interesting. It's all about like someone who's living in this POW or prisoner of war camp in Manhattan and like getting out and finding that there's like a lot of other stuff still happening outside of the prisoner of war camp. Still kind of looking at that apocalyptic vibe when I picked this one up. It's super interesting. Um, Simon Schuster imprint printed this one in, let's see, 2015. I, again, I really like the cover. I think the cover is super phenomenal. Sorry, let me get in the center there. I'm not the best camera person. Um, so I think the cover is super interesting. Love it. And I think this is one of the ones that I'm I'm very 50-50 on whether it would be for me or not. Um, but apparently the prose is good, so that's interesting. Um, all right, so City of Savages by Lee Kelly. Um, I read the first chapter of this. I'm very intrigued. It was a really quick read. Um, for 17 pages, I got through it really quickly, which is usually a good sign. So I like the writing a lot. Um, I'm interested in the characters, but we didn't get a lot of character building yet because this is set in a post-apocalyptic world that has like full world building that has to be done. Um, so I get that the characters are not fleshed out yet. Um, I do like the writing. I'm intrigued by the world building, especially because it's set in, it's not like the difference between this one and like this one, right? The islands at the end of the world. This book is about the apocalypse happening. This book happens like very, like a while after the apocalypse, I guess, to put it in the easiest words. So this happens after the apocalypse. Um, it's, you know, gosh, I don't even know how many years later, at least, I would say at least 16 years later, because the main character was not alive when the apocalypse happened, or her mother was pregnant with her, or something like that. So this is very much post-apocalyptic, and I'm interested in the world. Um, there's a lot of mentions of, um, like, this, a warden, and the back cover does say that, there, that Manhattan is a prisoner of war camp. Um, so I'm interested to kind of figure out how that works because it seems like the main characters are like camping out and like staying 
in, you know, abandoned apartments and things like that. So I'm interested in how, like, how this world is structured. So definitely want to keep this one. Definitely want to keep going in it. It's, the writing is definitely up my alley. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep this guy and see what I think. All right, so next up is a YA story that is like a magical boarding school type story. I don't know how this one ended up on my radar um, originally. I think I found it on thrift books, but it takes place in Europe. I believe the settings are Wales and England, and it's about a girl whose mother is in some way magical. I don't know if it's magical in a, like, in a mystical like magical realism sense or what um but then she's sent to a boarding school and she has to like find friends and she has her own magic um so there's there's a lot of that kind of thing this actually falls more in line with things that I think I would normally read it's also a Hugo and a Nebula award winner which is very interesting um and very appealing but I have just not been called to read this. At the time when I bought it, I think I thought it was about something different than it is. And at the time, it wasn't something I would read. Now, it's much more likely to be something I would actually read. Um, as opposed to some of these other books, which now are much less, <laughs> less within my wheelhouse. So this book was published in 2010. So, um, been a hot minute. Well... Copyright 2010, published first edition in 2011, January 2011. So interested to see what this one is about, but I think the paperback is stunning. The cover might be the one thing that drew, drew me in in the moment. I think that's, that's very cute, and I do love a magic story, so we shall see. So I actually broke the one chapter rule for this. I just, I didn't want to stop reading. Um, the prologue was super interesting. Well, I guess, so I didn't break the one chapter rule. This is written in a, like a date format, not necessarily a chapter format. Um, but I read the prologue and I had to know what happened in the first um, date range. So um, this is absolutely intriguing. I get the uh, winner status. Interesting fantasy for sure. Um, I love the, like, British magic Welsh vibes of it. Um, my family is historically Welsh, at least on my mom's side, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but, um, my family is Welsh, so I have some interest there. I've always been interested in kind of, like, Welsh magic. So that's definitely something that I'm interested in. So this is definitely staying, and I'm gonna read it. Um, I might even just, again, keep reading this one for the second in this, uh, vlog that I've said that about, but I really, I'm really interested in reading this. Um, so it's about our main character, Morwenna. Um, it seems like tragedy has struck and she's forced to live with her father, who she, whom she'd never met before after apparently running away from her mother. Um, and it seems like she's injured or been injured in some sort of accident. Um, she, in the prologue, was doing some magic, and there were fairies. Interested to see what's, uh, what's going on with that, how, like, where the line draws between magical realism and, like, legitimate and, like, fantasy. So I'm interested in that. Um, and she's going to a boarding school, which is super interesting. So I definitely want to pick this up. This one's pretty short, um, based on what I'm, I don't... It just barely crosses 300 pages. So this one's pretty short and probably one I could read fast, especially because I'm already on page 25. Um, so definitely going to keep this one. Definitely going to um, jump in and keep reading this guy. All right, and last up is Bone Chiller by Graham McNamee. Um, so this is, I believe, uh, yeah, it's an Edgar... 
Award winner for YA Mystery. Again, super interesting. Not something I pick up very often. Uh, this is a really cool cover. I love the look of this face. I also love that it's like an isolated winter mystery. So I might not connect with it right now because obviously I'm starting this vlog at least in the middle of uh, what month is it? Well, the end of July. So it might, maybe it'll like perfectly scratch the itch of being like cold weather, but maybe not. I am the least fan of summer. I absolutely hate it. So maybe this will help me feel a little bit happier because I love winter. Um, so it's about a young boy named Danny who follows his dad or is kind of towed along as his dad goes from place to place. Um, and they land in a town in sort of the center of Canada, so the big empty, as they call it, where there's not a lot of people. Um, but then winter sets in, and there's a quote-unquote centuries-old nightmare. So this is very much, again, hitting some vibes that I'm super interested now in. I do love a good horror, especially like a paranormal horror. I'm not sure if this is classified as a horror novel. Um, I'm not sure if when this was published they were classifying YA stuff as horror in general. I don't even know if this is technically YA or if it's middle grade either. Uh, this was published in 2008. Um, and it says high school students in the publisher's summary. So, yeah. So maybe it is YA, but it does seem like a horror novel. So we shall see. All right, so Bone Chiller. I started this guy, I read like seven pages. It's not for me. Um, I I think that young male protagonists are just not in the cards for me right now. It's just not, I'm just not super interested in it. Honestly, most protagon young protagonists in general are not for me. You have a couple of them that are obviously, um, you know, a little bit I'm interested in from this story, like there's a, or from this video, there's a couple that I'm actually interested in reading, but this one is not it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass it on. Obviously I bought it at a half price books. It has an interesting premise. I'm sure it's for somebody. It's just not for me. So I'm going to, um, pop this guy back into half price books and, um, hopefully somebody who really wants to read it will find it and really enjoy it. All right, so I have now read all of the first chapters of these books and a little bit more in some of them, and I have some results to share. So um, I read seven first chapters in this video, and there are two that I want to finish right away, like two that I'm going to jump on right now and finish reading. Those two are, among others, by Joe Walton. And The Islands at the End of the World by Alan Aslan. Super interested in both of those. I love everything about them thus far. So I'm going to pick those up and they're going to go right on my August reading uh, TBR. Now there are two others that I'm super interested in continuing through, but I'm probably not going to like jump on them right now. Um, the first of that being City of Savages by Lee Kelly. I love this premise. I'm interested in the characters. Um, I really want to see where the world is going because I love the idea of post-apocalyptic New York. It's something I wanted to write about myself. Um, so this is definitely one that I want to jump back on. And then The Way We Fall, which is uh, apocalyptic, not pre- or post-apocalyptic, kind of pre-apocalyptic, I guess. Um, but it's set on an island and... Um, flu-like disease with quarantine, so I'm a little interested in that, and I did read a pretty significant chunk of it, 
during my triad chapter, so I'm interested to um, jump on this. It is told in epistolary format, so it usually usually those read really fast. So um, this is one I'm definitely going to jump on. Now, they're worth three that I've decided I'm just going to continue on. Now I, you know, pass on. So I know when I originally read through Bone Gap, which is this one, I said that I would probably keep it and read through it, but the more I've thought about it, I like, I had already not really remembered what this was about since I put it down, which is not a good sign. Um, and while I'm, I loved the writing, I was interested in the writing, um, this kind of goes into what I was saying about Bone Chiller. Uh, the male main character, like this one especially had like major main character, male main character, like teenage male main character syndrome. Um, he was kind of cookie cutter. And again, that's probably just I'm reading it well after the trends of this book have died down and a lot of other books have very likely copied it. So it's just not my thing. Um, and I'm going to pass it on. Hopefully somebody who like will be interested in reading it will find it. Um, the other two are, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so the other two are Burning by Daniel Rollins. Again, interested, but the writing's not for me. I'm just not, not into the writing, which is totally fine. Um, and then Bone Chiller by Graham McNamee. Um, I'm interested in the fact that the three books that I'm not keeping all start with B. That's an interesting trend, um, and there are no other uh, B titles, so I just got rid of all the ones that start with B. So, interesting. Um, so that is where I'm at with these. Uh, I'm going to add those two, those first two I talked about, to my August TBR. You will see those in my wrap-up. And I'm um, interested to know your thoughts on Try a Chapter Tags. This is the first one I've ever done. I will say that it had some unique challenges. Um, I, I find jumping from book to book a little bit difficult. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, you know, kind of sitting down over the last couple of days and reading just a single chapter and then moving on has been a little bit challenging for me because I just, I either want to keep going or I want to stop reading. Like, I'm not very good at context shifting, but I do think it's been a learning experience because I probably read a hundred pages in the last hour between, or, you know, in an hour between the last four books that I just did kind of all together. So, you know, there's no reason, like, it just goes to show that I, I could read more than I do <laughs> because um, if I just sit my, set my mind to it, there's obviously more time to read than I think there is. So, um, lots to learn. But thank you so much for watching this video and checking out my messy library, and I will talk to you later.